Okay, in this uh, lecture, we will discuss external compensation techniques. There are two external compensation techniques, uh, one is dominant pole compensation and second one is pole zero compensation. First, I will consider the dominant pole compensation. Let A is the uncompensated transfer function. This is A uncompensated transfer function with input V i and let us call this output as a, let us call this output as V0 dash. Then externally we are going to connect a RC network which provides a dominant pole. And this is the final output V0. So, if I assume that A dash is the transfer function of the compensator network, So, this is given by V naught by V i, this overall system and A is the transfer function of uncompensated system. This is given by this output by this input. First, I will find out the relation between this V naught dash and uh, V naught. What is V naught in terms of V naught dash? This is voltage division. This in Laplace transform, we can write down this one as 1 by SC. So, this is V naught, this is V naught dash, this is V naught. So, what is V naught? V naught dash times 1 over SC divided by R plus 1 over SC. So, this is equal to SC SC will get cancelled. So, 1 over 1 plus SRC times A0 dash. But I want A dash. Okay. So, if I want A dash is equal to V0 by VI. This is equal to in terms of uh, A, what will be this value? V0 dash is equal to A into VI or VI is equal to V0 dash by A. So, from this VI is equal to V0 dash by A. A is uncompensated transfer function. If you substitute this VI here, so you will get a V naught into a divided by V naught dash. So, what is uh, V naught by V naught dash from here? One over one plus S R C. So, this is equal to A times V zero by V zero dash is this one over one plus S R C. This is the expression for the transfer function of compensated network. Here A is the transfer function of the system. Okay. So, that may consisting of uh, any number of break frequencies. If I assume that the system is having three 
break frequencies then uh, we have written the expression for the a as a is equal to a o l which is the open loop gain divided by 1 plus j f by f 1 into 1 plus j f by f 2 1 plus j f by f 3 under whose frequency response we have plotted as this is 20 dB per decade this is another 20 dB per decade this is another 20 dB per decade this is your f1 f2 this is f3 this is 20 dB per decade minus 40 dB per decade this is minus 60 dB per decade this is the frequency response of uncompensated network Now, with the compensation, how this uh, frequency response will be modified. Okay. For that, if I substitute this A in the expression that I have obtained for the A dash, A dash is equal to A times A O L divided by 1 plus J F by F 1, 1 plus J F by F 2, 1 plus J F by F3. This is A. This is A times 1 over 1 plus SRC into 1 over 1 plus SRC. So, this SRC can be written as or 1 plus SRC is equal to 1 plus J omega is 2 pi f r c. So, if I assume this 1 by 2 pi r c as f d, this will be 1 plus j times f by f d, where f d is 1 over 2 pi r c is called dominant pole or dominant frequency. So, therefore, what happens to this A dash? AOL divided by 1 plus J F by F D is this term into remaining these three terms 1 plus J F by F 1, 1 plus J F by F 2, 1 plus J F by F 3. Here F D is less than F 1 is less than F 2 is less than F 3. This is F 1, F 2, F 3, F D will be somewhere before this F 1. So, I will write somewhere here F D. Then the compensated uh, network will have frequency response. So, instead of having uh, minus 20 dB, minus 40 dB, minus 60 dB, so we have only minus 20 dB per decade up to F1. This is the frequency response of compensated frequency network. This is the frequency response of compensated network. So, we can avoid the problem with uh, the uncompensated network where there is a possibility of uh, instability if the gain is 
somewhere here or here okay, that I have described uh, in the previous slides. Now, we can avoid that problem by uh, providing a dominant uh, pole, but the drawback of this type of uh, compensation technique is now the bandwidth will be this much. Previously, the bandwidth was without uh, compensation, this was the bandwidth. Now, bandwidth has been decreased. So, the open loop bandwidth. decreases drastically. This is the drawback of uh, the dominant pole compensation technique. So, to avoid this drawback, we have the second technique called as pole 0 compensation. So, as the name implies we are going to introduce one pole and one zero at the output of uncompensated operation amplifier circuit. This is uncompensated circuit V i and let us call this output as V 0 dash. Then here instead of having just simply a resistor and capacitor we will be having two resistor and one capacitor. This is V 0 final output. Let us call this one as R 1. R2 C2. This you can call as Z2, this you can call as Z1 in terms of impedances. Now, what will be expression for this uh, transfer function of the compensated network okay, A dash? We can derive in a similar manner A dash is equal to V0 by VI and A is equal to V naught dash by V i or implies V i is equal to V naught dash by A. So, if you substitute this here, this A dash is equal to this V i is V naught dash by A. So, this is A times V naught by V naught dash. So, if I first find out V naught by V naught dash, you can substitute here. So, in order to find out V naught by V naught dash, what is V naught in terms of V naught dash voltage division? V naught dash into Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. This is equal to Z2 is nothing but R2 plus 1 by SC2 divided by Z1 is simply R1 plus R2 plus 1 by SC2 into V0 dash. So, if you simplify this 1 plus S R 2 C 2 the numerator S C 2 S C 2 will get cancelled. So, this is equal to 1 plus S times R 1 plus R 2 times C 2 into V naught dash. You can further simplify this if I take S R 2 C 2 in the numerator common then this will be 1 plus 1 over S R 2 C 2 and in the denominator if I take S into R 1 plus R 2 into C 2 then this will be 1 plus 1 over S into R 1 plus R 2 times C 2. Now, this S S C 2 C 2 get cancelled. So, this will be now into of course, V naught dash R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 into this I will call as 1 plus this S C nothing but J omega 2 pi f this also J omega 2 pi f. So, S C is equal to J omega which is equal to J 2 pi f and if I define this 1 over 2 pi 
R2C2 टू सी टू इज ईक्वल टू एफ वन एंड वन ओवर टू पै आर वन प्लस आर टू इंटू सी टू एफ नाट सो दिन वाट विल बी दिस टेर्म This term becomes now S is equal to J omega two pi two pi will get cancelled, so we'll get J F by F one. And the denominator will get one plus J F by F naught into V zero dash. If I choose this R two much much greater than If R2 is much much greater than R1, then R2 by R1 plus R2 is approximately equal to unity. So this is approximately equal to one plus J times F by F1 divided by one plus J times F by F not into V not dash. This is v naught. So, what is v naught by v naught dash that we are going to substitute here? So implies v naught by v naught dash is equal to one plus j times f by f one divided by one plus j into f by f naught. So, if I substitute this v naught by v Dash here, a dash is equal to a times one plus j f by f one divided by one plus j f by f naught. What is a in terms of open loop gain? Assuming that three break frequencies is a O L by one plus j f by f one one plus j f by f2 1 plus j f by f3 into this frequency we are going to choose this f1 such that this f1 f1 will get cancelled 1 plus j f by f not so this is we are going to choose this f1 such that this will cancel with The first break frequency, so that this output A O L divided by one plus J times F by F naught into one plus J times F by F two into one plus J times F by F three. Here F naught is less than F two is less than F three. F one is get cancelled. Now, if I plot this frequency response, then bandwidth will increase, and also this 20 dB decayed uh, slope will be there up to the frequency f2. I'll plot on the same uh, graph. This is compensated system with dominant pole compensation. Now, if I plot for this uh, pole zero compensation, if I assume that this is the frequency f naught, so the next frequency is f two. F one is going to get cancelled. F naught to f two, it will go with twenty uh, dB per decade slope. So this will go up to f two. So this is the Frequency response of pole zero compensation. Now compared to this dominant pole, this was the bandwidth. Now the bandwidth will be this much. Bandwidth is increased. And at the same time, this my 20 dB per decade slope will be there up to f2 point. So there will be no stability issue. Okay. So yeah, the 
two uh, types of the uh, external compensations, pole zero compensation and dominant pole compensation. There are some applications uh, where we need only the lower frequencies such as the instrumentation applications. In applications where high frequency compensation is not required. Such as if I take uh, pressure variation, temperature variation and even if you take the biomedical signals, uh, the ECG, EG variations, they are slow varying signals. If you consider the pressure, temperature, etcetera, they are slowly varying signals. Here we do not need this external compensation. So, in that case normally we will provide the compensation internal to the operational amplifier. So, the other type of compensation is called internal compensation. That is the resistor and capacitor will be fabricated inside the operational amplifier itself. So, if I consider the IC741. This is internally compensated op amp. If I take the frequency response of this IC741, which is at 10 to the power of 5 gain. This will be somewhere 10 to the power of minus 1. This is 10 megahertz. So, this is 10 to the power of minus 1 and this is 10. This axis is gain, this is bandwidth. So, the gain bandwidth product will be constant. The gain bandwidth product of 741 is Megahertz. This is called GBW. It is clear that here 10 megahertz is the bang bandwidth. This is the bandwidth. And gain is 10 to the power of minus 1. 10 into 10 to the power of minus 1 megahertz, which is equal to 1 megahertz. If I consider 10 to the power of 4 gain, here this will occur at 100 hertz. So, what is the gain bandwidth product? GBW is equal to into the power of 4 into 100 which is equal to 1 giga hertz. You take any point the gain bandwidth product will be constant that is of the order of uh, 1 giga hertz for uh, 741 IC. For a given gain, there is a maximum limit on the bandwidth. Beyond that, we cannot uh, process by using the given operational amplifier. Okay. So, this is the limitation of this operational amplifier at uh, small signals. So, this gain bandwidth product is high frequency limitations. This gain bandwidth product is high frequency limitation. for small signals. So, small signals are normally called as the signals of amplitude millivolts or microvolts. Whereas, the same uh, high frequency limitation is there for the, the large signals also. Okay. So, that uh, high frequency limitation for the large signals.
for large signals normally of the order of volts is called as slow rate this is another important parameter of operational amplifier so now we will discuss the slow rate slow rate is defined as the maximum rate of change of the output output of half amp with respect to time so slow rate sr is defined as d by dt of v not the maximum value if i consider say the voltage follower circuit So whatever the input should be equal to output, this is voltage follower. So if I give the input as step, this is the input VI. If I give input as step signal, output will not be a step signal. Output will go to if this is V volts, this amplitude is V, say. Then the output will be, it will go to V with some slope. It will finally reach V after some time. But before that, there will be a yes, linear variation the slope of this one is slow rate so normally slow rate will be measured in volts per microsecond is the unit of slow rate suppose if slow rate is given as 1 volt per microsecond the meaning of this one is 1 volt per microsecond the meaning of this one is the output either rises or falls not beyond 1 volt per a microsecond. That means the output falls or rises not beyond 1 volt per 1 microsecond. For an ideal operational amplifier, slew rate should be infinity means output simultaneously changes with the input. That is here if I give the input as this step signal V i output also immediately will get step signal. This is of V volts, this is also of V volts. But this is the ideal case. For practical case, it will take some time to get the output voltage, which is equal to input voltage. Okay. So, practically, the slew rate values varies from 0.1 to 1000 volts per microsecond. This is normal range of practical op amp. Now, to have a better understanding of this uh, slew rate, if I consider the input VI as Vm sin omega t and we will consider the voltage follower only. So, output is equal to input for voltage follower. Why? Because the, the 
most of the operational amplifier the specification will be given as a slew rate for unity gain. So, normally slew rate will be specified for unity gain that is why I am considering the voltage follow here. Then V naught is also equal to V m sin omega t. Then what is dv naught by dt is equal to vm omega cos omega t and slew rate is defined as the maximum rate of change of the output dv by dt the maximum value. So, what is the maximum value of this one? The maximum value of cos omega t is equal to 1. So, this will be simply vm into omega this is equal to Vm omega is 2 pi f or from this we can find out the maximum frequency that will be allowed is maximum frequency f max is given by SR by 2 pi Vm. So, if SR is in uh, volts per microsecond into 10 to the power of 6 here SR will be volts per second. Now, because 10 to the power of 6 have written, now here this SR will be volts per microsecond. And if you simplify this value, this will be around SR by 6.28 around Vm into 10 to the power of 6 Hz. So, what is this F max? This is called maximum power bandwidth. This F max is called maximum power means so this op amp can process up to F max only without any distortion. Op amp gives undistorted output for frequencies up to f max. If I apply the input frequency above this f max there will be distortion undistorted in the sense the shape of the signal remains same. So, if I apply the frequencies beyond this f max there will be distortion in the output. So, this slew rate decides what is the maximum frequency to get undistorted output this is one definition. The other way if I fix this f max to a value then this slew rate will uh, give the maximum undistorted output the amplitude of maximum undistorted output at a given frequency and get a given slow rate then it will give the maximum undistorted amplitude of the signal. Okay. There are two ways we are going to apply the input to this signal V i is equal to V m sin 2 pi f t. So, this slow rate decides what is the maximum frequency that we can apply so that the output will be undistorted. The maximum frequency. On the other hand, if I fix the frequency, this slew rate uh, at a given frequency, slew rate decides the maximum undistorted output voltage swing if the input is this output is what is the maximum value of this amplitude 
what is the maximum value of this amplitude without changing shape of this input. So, input is sinusoidal signal. Output also should be exactly same sinusoidal signal with some maximum magnitude limit. This will be decided by the slew rate. If I fix this one, then the slew rate will decide the maximum frequency of the input signal that will uh, cause undistorted output. Okay. This is about the slew rate. So, we will consider the examples in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.